I have been evaluating two MacBook Pros recently, the 16-inch M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM and another 16-inch M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM. And in case anyone asks, I prefer the silver color. I work with Android, iOS, Swift, Kotlin, Flutter, and a little bit of React. One of the projects that I help maintain professionally is a native Android and iOS app with each containing over hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And the performance improvement of these new MacBook Pros, specifically enabled by these new M1 chips, is not just an incremental change. The performance improvement is significant. It is a performance multiplier. So much so that every dev on my team is upgrading early. For reference, the Intel-based MacBook Pro that I upgraded from has 64 gigs of RAM and an Intel i9 processor. To say that we've been seeing significant performance improvements when moving over from these Intel-based Macs still just seems absolutely crazy to me, but it's been months and it still blows my mind. This M1 Pro with only 16 gigs of RAM is still compiling our code bases four times faster than the Intel-based variants. RAM utilization, though, on this M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM is maxed out. All 16 gigs is always used when we're doing our workflow. So that means memory is being swapped to disk with the SSD continually throughout the day, which can lead to premature SSD failure. Whereas on the M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM, I'm constantly hovering in that 40 to 50 gig memory utilization band because I'm running simulators, multiple Docker containers, and even several instances of heavy IDEs. And because I know memory's not being swapped with disk on this M1 Max, I'm far less concerned about the SSD on this machine. Well, I'm clearly doing fine here. I've got a machine for light everyday use and a machine that I can just throw absolutely everything at. So why am I so excited about the Mac Studio with M1 Ultra? The first thing that I noticed about the keynote for the Mac Studio was the refreshed design of the Mac Mini. The enclosure is taller, there are more I.O. ports, and it also looks like the Mac Studio is going to get the full speaker treatment, which if it's anything like these MacBook Pros, is significant. I listen to music on these all the time and it's incredible. I think this was a really wise move on Apple's part. The Mac Mini was always the budget item when trying to get into the Mac ecosystem. You bring your own monitor, you bring your own peripherals, and you're set up, you're ready to go. The problem with the Mac Mini though was that the upper bound of processing ability was always capped. Sure, you can get a Mac Mini with an eight core M1 chip and 16 gigs of RAM, but that's the max limit. And compared to this Mac Pro here with 16 gigs of RAM, that's a significant less amount of processing power. Thermally, the Mac Mini was a really small footprint, so dissipating large amounts of heat was always something it was going to struggle with, which is why I think it always fell into that budget category. But also that small footprint made it hard to add the additional I.O. ports that it desperately needed. And as a side note, I love that the Mac Studio is gonna come with forward-facing ports. So I think Apple said, we wanna make the next iteration of the Mac Mini, what is that gonna be? So they set out to build a machine that covered a broader spectrum of processing power. From casual, light, everyday use, to throw your entire development environment at it, and it's still absolutely insane what you can accomplish on top of that, and the fans won't even run, to now twice the processing power of this M1 Max that I have here in my hands? Someone check Intel's stock, because this is absolutely ludicrous. I think that alone is significant and really worth taking note of here. Apple has come to the table with a single machine that covers uh, an entire spectrum of ability. 
that is something I don't think Apple has ever done. Like hypothetically, you think about this, your grandparents could own the base model for casual everyday use. It would last them many years to come while you still using the same enclosure but updated specs could be writing critical software infrastructure. But only as long as you're writing unit tests. If, if you are writing unit tests, make sure you hit that like button. I absolutely love the twist that the M1 Max has this like ultra fusion built into the die. That way two M1 Maxes can be built in a connected state. Okay, so who is the M1 Ultra chip even for? And should you even consider buying it? I think first what we need to do is a cost comparison. I have owned this M1 Max here since launch day. Well, the day after launch, I picked it up in the store. And it runs my entire development workflow with ease. No fans. I maybe plug it in once if the battery starts to get a little bit low. It runs an iOS or Android simulator with ease, multiple Docker containers, and several instances of memory heavy IDEs that are also just indexing all the time. Compiling, testing, integration tests, things running in tandem. I just notice no lag whatsoever. This MacBook Pro with the M1 Max has a 32 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and a four terabyte SSD. It cost $48.99 out the door. And for the same hardware configuration on the Mac Studio will be $37.99. So you're paying an extra $1,100 for an amazing screen, an incredible screen, a keyboard with zero issues, I dev on this all the time, and a pack of batteries that will last you all day long. And the first thing you're gonna to have to decide, and I'm absolutely serious about this, is are you gonna code on the couch? Because maybe some of you like me were actually getting burned by the Intel MacBook Pros when you tried to code on the couch, so it was just something you stopped doing as a result of that. But these machines, and I'll be completely honest, 16 is really not that big when it's sitting in your lap. It's great for coding on the couch. It is a great couch companion. You know, the, like I said, the previous iteration, the Intel-based Mac that I had before was fully specced and it would burn my lap. It was completely unusable in a mobile environment. The second thing, and I'm very serious about this too, is what is your current memory usage and what do you forecast it'll be in the next three to five years? Now I went with the M1 Max because I hover around 40 to 50 gigs of memory usage for my dev environment. And that's just standard average running every single day. So the M1 Max with 64 gigs of RAM made the most sense for me. But that's just my personal development journey. I work with Kotlin and statically typed languages that run on the JVM. Those are very expensive, memory hungry operations. So what I'm getting at here is that you should really consider your memory usage, your forecasted memory usage, and make a chip decision based upon that. Now, if you're a game developer, you're definitely gonna to wanna to consider the GPU cores as well. I ancillarily got extra GPU cores, but that wasn't my primary focus. Memory was my primary focus. And then obviously the third thing you're gonna to have to consider is the amount of space you're gonna need. For development, you are absolutely gonna to wanna to run your code on the SSD because there is no faster way to develop, compile, and test than against the code that is running on the SSD that's plugged right into these chips. But if you do find that you need a ludicrous amount of space and you're not really doing heavy I.O. on those individual files, then maybe you should consider a Mac Studio with an external Thunderbolt SSD. That is a much more cost-effective way to get the space you may need. Now paying an extra 1100 bucks to get the portability and all day use out of this system is extremely valuable to me. I am still going to buy a Mac Studio though. And the reason for that is my home server was recently fried in an electrical surge. I am so excited about setting up a home server based upon this new Mac Studio solution. So some place that I can drop all my media, my code backups, somewhere where I can run small servers for other ser services in my house to hit. It's just gonna be the perfect complement to this desk. Which Mac Studio I purchased though? You're just gonna need to subscribe to wait and find out. I super appreciate connecting with all of you today. I hope you have a wonderful day and until next time.